Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have a very special guest and a very dear friend with me, uh, Vinay Vidya Sagar, also known as the Lazy Indian Techie. He's extremely active recently on Twitter. Uh, Vinay, welcome to my channel and uh, let's have a small introduction about yourself and then we'll get started with the conversation. Thanks, Nikhil. Yeah. Um, just speaking of Twitter, now X, I have been very active and it hasn't it been fun just of late. I think for the last six months or so. But before that, uh, yeah, my name is Vinay and uh, I'm, I would call myself uh, someone who's a gamer turned game developer. So I suffer hugely from imposter syndrome in that sense also. Uh, I am in my late thirties. I might not look that a lot of people say I don't, but yeah. Also, uh, so I grew up playing games and then uh, since 2015, I said, I want to make games. So I've been learning. It's been an interesting journey. Then I think uh, recently I met Nikhil also. It's actually an honor to be invited onto your channel, Nikhil. I know you're a really big person and all that. Everywhere you go, you have multitudes of people coming and ask, asking you for your autograph. So it's like, and just to see the humility that you have, uh, you know, it, it's amazing. And thank you for inviting me on this uh, podcast. You know, uh, it's it's been a dream to also uh, get into this whole game dev, game dev industry. And yeah, I don't know what else. <laughs> this is my first interview so i'm also like you know not used to this so yeah uh, yeah that's a short a brief intro about me awesome Vinay. Uh, so you know you talked a little bit about your background in gaming so what are the kind of games that you grew up over the years and what was that one gaming experience that made you think that i should explore the other side of uh, the journey as well right so there are two paths to the story. Uh, I I think uh, said this on a podcast before, but uh, when I was a kid, uh, I grew up in Bangalore in India. Uh, we had this uh, uh, slot machines, not slot machines, sorry, that's the wrong word I'm using for it, the arcade machines. <laughs> so uh, there's a theater called Rex. And when I was like maybe two to three years old, my mom used to take us for movies. And uh, after the movie, uh, we were passing by and uh, there's one guy who had these arcade machines with Mario on them right uh, and then i would obviously irritate my mom and she'd be like okay fine and uh, so and play mario and i spent hours there right almost every sunday mommy would, would take us for movies so it was carbon park which is quite famous in bangalore and then movies and then we'd do uh, mario and it was, it was every uh, every try or every time you lost your three lives and died you had to put in one rupee and one rupee for each attempt they back then was like really expensive. And after about like third or fourth time, my mom would be like slowly dragging me away. Uh, so that is like my first introduction to uh, games as such. Uh, weirdly enough, uh, if you know, India wasn't a huge place for consoles then, but uh, the kind of uh, my owners where we were staying then, uh, they seem to have a Nintendo, one of the systems and I would just play a lot of these uh, Donkey Kong and just random games. Most of them I don't even remember now because I was so young, right? That happened. And then obviously, uh, I grew up uh, just playing random games uh, for a long time. FIFA and, uh, you know, games like that became like a core. Uh, I remember playing FIFA 98, I think, was my first FIFA. So I'm really old. But yeah, that happened. So this was just a casual game uh, uh, phase of my life. And then uh, so then I kind of gravitated towards whatever studies and then I'm actually a high school dropout so I dropped out and then life happened so I got really busy with just <laughs> uh, typically my uh, mom trying to push me to do engineering and I just kind of rebelled and said I don't want to do that even my tuition teacher I remember said this guy is very playful just please put him in arts he'll pass and then my mom was like no my whole family is an in you know I filled with engineers and the usual Indian uh, dream, right? So that was fun. So I did that and then got caught up in the whole, uh, you know, corporate sector. I've been doing, uh, I was doing broadcast, uh, I was in films and stuff. And then uh, my last job in that kind of uh, phase was with LG. And I was in internal communication, I was handling internal communication for LG. But I reached a certain point in 2015 where I was very disoriented with life. I uh, went through a really hard phase and I I decided to quit LG without another job. And I said, I just need to do something I like. And at this point, I went back and obviously the first thing I did was buy a PS3 and then uh, bought FIFA because that's kind of the only game, you know, I uh, thought of. And then I happened to watch a certain uh, few IGN videos and I remember uh, watching Tomb Raider ka reboot that happened. Uh, Lara Croft falls into the water and it's all fancy and I'm like, wow, games are really like, you know, uh, gone ahead and like they look insane right 
so i i used to watch the rad brat who is i think everyone knows the rad brat he is like a very he's a very famous streamer and i thoroughly enjoyed his videos and then i decided to uh, till then i hadn't gotten into like third person games or uh, stuff i had played a few call of duties obviously and that and then uh, i tried tomb raider i really liked it uh, i was very drawn to the whole uh, third person uh, story driven uh, uh, version of tomb raider because as a kid obviously you uh, played the old tomb raiders and they're very janky and stuff right so this was fun and then i somehow uh, chanced upon this small indie game called the last of us <laughs> i'm putting indie in quotes but yeah, i didn't know what last of us was i didn't know who naughty dog was right so i said this looks interesting and something about the way the uh, the characters uh, uh, were kind of connecting with each other and the story and all that really like uh, gripped me because as i said i i'm from a film background so uh, story stuff is like very uh, second nature to me i really enjoyed the trailer that i saw and i picked it up and that was kind of the turning moment where when i finished last of us i probably cried my eyes out and i said uh, you know i want to make stuff like this and this is what i want to do with my life and that kind of began this whole second phase of my journey of you know uh, gaming and uh, i doubled down on that i started playing all kinds of uh, then next was uncharted for me uh, i just basically played all of naughty dogs games because i was like you know these guys are insane uh, developers and stuff and so i played a lot of that i was a huge uh, platinum trophy hunter so i have around 38 platinums on, on the psn and stuff so that was like my second phase of gaming yeah so yeah this is whole this is like a very long <laughs> narrative story of my gaming history yeah the, the you mentioned the last of us i mean it's it's such a beautifully made game uh, you know even i cried and i think there are only two games uh, that have made me cry one is the last of us yeah. and the second one mm-hmm. is redemption 2 at the end uh, spoiler alert for those of okay. you I haven't played RDR two. Uh, at the end, when Arthur Mag- uh, Morgan dies, uh, it was such a crushing, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, uh, do you think that uh, the gaming industry has an even more deeper connect than movies? And what are your thoughts on parallels between movies and games? Yeah. I actually uh, that's a very good question. Uh, this is something that I've been a huge proponent of. I think. Uh, we call them video games but they've kind of transcended into a whole new form of media right i look at them as your usual like uh, gameplay solid gameplay games which is like your baldur's gate and you know stuff like the mechanics are really good diablo and stuff then i see games like the last of us which are more a story driven experiences right anyone can pick it up like someone who's not a gamer will probably pick it up and understand and gravitate towards that so i see a kind of a new medium being built in between say movies and uh, games typically which is like interactive entertainment right i think uh, netflix did something uh, some experimental stuff with this in bandersnatch snatch and stuff which is early stuff but i personally if i'm on the uh, of a, i'm of the opinion that maybe in about 15 to 20 years we will have like a completely new medium where you have a uh, interactive experience where people can make a choice and it's going to be somewhere between movies and games where you don't have to put as much effort as a hardcore like you know combat uh, heavy game and just have experience like the last of us and i think the last of us part to kind of redefined uh, games as such to a large extent because if you look at it it achieved certain uh, emotional uh connections that is very hard to do with traditional movies right uh, spoilers again when uh, you reach the end of uh, part 1 of part 2 i like to call it in the middle and then you switch to playing as abby my initial uh, frustration was like oh my god why do i have to play as abby i'm so angry with her but then the way they take you from that point to actually bring you to a point where at the end i when we had to fight ellie i was like no i don't want to fight ellie please don't kill abby you know like don't do this and that is like incredible like i found that traditional media where you don't play as a character kind of is not able to uh, bring out those emotions in you and you know so i i, I honestly think that uh, it's going to create this new hyper uh, medium which is uh, going to be totally different yeah. i have personally always been a fan of uh, choice based games you know when in you um, yeah. when in your choices matter i think one of the best uh, or most beautifully made games in that uh, category definitely has to be the mass effect trilogy um, and yeah. of course andromeda went to, on a whole different tangent but 
I really liked how they pulled together Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3. And the fact that the choices you make in Mass Effect 1 actually have lasting impact mm-hmm. in Mass Effect 2 and so on and so forth in Mass Effect 3 as well. Uh, even you mm-hmm. talk about, uh, you know, uh, switching to uh, Abby and uh, having to fight uh, Ellie, right? Uh, I faced a similar dilemma in Grand Theft Auto V towards the end, wherein you have to make a choice on who survives at the end, right? Uh, I won't spoil the game for those of you who haven't played it, but I think it's about time that you play it because Grand Theft Auto VI is also uh, on the corner, right? Uh, let's mm-hmm. talk about that, uh, Vinay. Uh, you know, Grand Theft Auto VI, the trailer is finally out. Uh, we are all blown away. Uh, a lot of people uh, have started speculating on what's uh, going to happen, what's not going to happen. So what is something that you personally as a gamer are excited about uh, GTA 6? And the second part, in addition to that is, what do you think might have been the development challenges that Rockstar might have potentially gone through to create such a masterpiece? Yeah, it's it's crazy, right? Uh, that I don't think there's a single piece of uh, media, right, including movies and games that have been as famous or as uh, money making as Grand Theft Auto Five, right? Some statistic I read in twenty uh, twenty or something said GTA Five surpassed uh, the box office collections of Spider Man, Avengers, everything combined, and it's it's just a behemoth uh, you know stuff that uh, culturally speaks to everyone so i think grand theft auto 6 is just going to be uh, insanely uh, you know uh, way more uh, like we've seen the trailer it, it looks insane honestly i looked at it and uh, you know we messaged in the group also saying how the hell do you achieve this guys and uh, like if you look at the graphics and uh, it's all real time and that's what's mind blowing that rockstar has achieved something so incredible which is running real time recently also there have been these rumors that uh, it's going to be uh, you know running on the ps5 pro and there's been this to and fro already chatter going on about how uh, ps5 pro might not even support it at uh, you know 60 fps it'll be at 30 fps and stuff so that's how heavy it is and i think one of the biggest challenges they have is to even match the success of gta 5 just as a game developer if you look at it how do you uh, follow up GTA 5 and make it as big as a cultural phenomena, right? Uh, so that's the, I think from Roxas' perspective, that's like the biggest fear saying, I hope we don't screw this up because uh, we really need to, because I think we know that there are so many like critics, uh, you know, especially YouTube critics that are there who will pick on the smallest thing and like, you know, make a huge deal about it. So I think just from a expectation perspective, I really hope Rockstar is able to like deliver. I think they will because they're Rockstar. They've taken that time. Uh, that's one major thing. And I think another development challenge is again, uh, just seeing the graphics and uh, what they've achieved, right? As game developers, we look at it and like, they must be doing some kind of like magic, right? <laughs> like how are they achieving stuff? So uh, that is a huge thing. Developmentally, I think uh, just uh, having a lot of outsourcing partners and working with huge, uh, massive teams to uh, you know, develop the game and also kind of keep it secret, right? Uh, imagine it for it. Uh, some of the footage already leaked and stuff, so they faced a lot of uh, battles that way. But I think it's fine. It's I, Rockstar probably takes it as you know part of the whole uh, marketing of uh, you know how big Rockstar is. We're so cool that you know we are so big. And there, I remember there's a uh, like a discussion between Linda Yakarino on X and also of like why are you putting your video on YouTube put it on X so you get more views so it's like a cultural phenomenon that uh, I think I just want to uh, just go through this journey of discovering what GTA 6 is and just experience the good the highs and the lows and then how GTA online is kind of going to shape up with regards to you know GTA 6 yeah so that that's yeah it, it's, it's very exciting <laughs> Yeah, 100%. And I think uh, GTA has established themselves in that small category wherein they are a household name, not just in the uh, tongues of uh, or the lingo of kids, but also parents. Parents are like concerned. And, uh, you know, even if they don't know all the other games, they do know at least GTA. Even if they don't know like the full form of GTA, they know GTA, that my kid is playing GTA and this is happening and all. So that's something that they've achieved uh, and, uh, you know, it's it's difficult to do that. And this is a, a work of almost 30 odd years, right? 30 plus years that they've pulled through. And it's, it's now paralleling the same uh, with, you know, the state of the industry here in India. I think there are some great efforts being made from India, uh, which are, of course, at a grassroots level right now. But 
I can't wait to see how the next decade of game development will shape up in India, right? So what are your thoughts on the upcoming game development scenario in India? Yeah, that's a very interesting question because I think immediately those parallels are being drawn now also, right? The moment GTA 6 launched. Um, I think it's good. What I'm seeing is um, as part of the group also, the game dev group in India is a lot of people even from outside India are taking interest in India now, right? So like, for example, I finally got to meet uh, Shohei Yoshida at this IGDC and he's, uh, for people who don't know, he's uh, one of the key figures who was responsible for studios like Naughty Dog, right? And uh, he was there and, you know, they had a proper India hero project is happening and stuff. I mean, there are a lot of uh, uh, protocols and stuff, but I think just seeing their interest here kind of gives you an idea of uh, them seeing India as a valuable market, right? So they are willing to invest time, effort, because these are all, these are all like really busy people, right? They have like a back-to-back, -back, uh, like extremely like complex meetings and they're taking time out to come to India. And India has, I think, so far been a very uh, mobile heavy market, obviously. Uh, you know, a development hub for that. So a lot of the development structure also is built around those kind of, uh, you know, games and all that. But I see that slowly we're getting a space for development of uh, more narrative driven games and, you know, like uh, games like GTA that uh, we're working on here and stuff. So it's, I, I see over the next 10 years that uh, I see a lot of skill upskilling happening in the industry. I what I hope is that a lot of people from other countries like AAA studios will also take interest and come here, start their own uh, smaller studios. And there is a lot of like knowledge transfer, right? Which, because I think that's something that's uh, uh, kind of lacking right now in our industry. Uh, like you know, you know how how much of a dearth uh, Unreal Engine developers are in India, right? So, but it's also exciting because I see a lot of people finally switching to game development as a career. And I think uh, uh, Outscale and Mayank also are doing an amazing job with that of uh, providing that platform uh, for even uh, say software engineers who want to try something new it's it's quite easy to jump into game dev now and do the full stack course or whatever and, you know do that so a lot of uh, i see a lot of the younger generation automatically getting into gaming see when i was a kid like i said uh, if i gamed a lot people would my, my, my mom and my mom wouldn't say anything but like your friend circle or whatever would be like, why are you wasting your time? Go do something with your life, uh, you know, stuff. But I think it's getting to a point now where esports and a lot of things are actually becoming a norm in India, which uh, we're kind of catching up to the West in that sense. So I see that there is, uh, it's headed in a positive direction, right? I'm super excited for that. Uh, and uh, I can't wait to see, even, even as I attend these IGDC, um, you know, conferences and all, I see the amount of talent. India has amazing talent, right? I think uh, with proper guidance from uh, experienced people and all that, I think uh, there's a long, um, like, what do you say, a bucket of talent available because I've worked with the film industry. I've known animators and extremely talented, even if you go to uh, Chennai and the South, uh, you know, the kind of animators and, you know, uh, color graders and all that, there are a, they're incredible, which is why I think a lot of work gets outsourced to us also. So I see that kind of, a lot of that industry also uh, uh, kind of uh, moving into the whole gaming space. And it'll be, uh, I think we are very helpful. Uh, I've seen Indian game developers, especially game dev in general, but especially in India are like, very uh, helpful to jump in, solve a problem, discuss all kinds of things and all that. So it it is bright and it's, I would say if uh, someone, you know, all the youngsters watching this, if uh, you want to get into game dev, this is like the perfect time to do it because you are at the cusp of kind of, uh, you know, slingshotting into like a big uh, a bull run kind of a, you know, game dev journey. So it's, it's a good time to get into game development. I 100% agree with you on that part. And uh, just to add a little bit to this, uh, to expand on the fact that this is perhaps the best time to get started, not just from a perspective that the market is growing, but on the other hand, you have all the tools available for at your disposal that you didn't have back then. I mean, you have tutorials now, you have online resources, documentation, and you have a high-speed internet connection. And uh, the latest thing, you have chat GPT in all these online AI tools, right? A lot of people are actually concerned that AI is going to take over jobs or something. Like personally, I feel that at least in game development, it will kind of just enhance your work productivity, right? So what are your thoughts on all these AI tools and how will that affect the entire game development process? 
I, I will start with a disclaimer saying I'm not, I don't intend to hurt any of the artists out there and all that, but, uh, you know, I, I am very pro AI, right? And I understand the fears, right? I understand the fears of AI replacing, say, artists. Uh, I'll give you an example. I, I was part of the Unity beta to kind of try out some of the Muse and other tools, and they're insanely good. Like, I could just add a component in the Unity editor and generate, like, a piece of code which, which would make, like, a character move around and stuff. And it basically eliminates the job of an intern who might do that or whatever. But uh, I think that's the wrong way of looking at it, saying my job, like, you know, I lost my job or whatever, because um, I think AI is just a tool, right? If you're kind of fundamentally confident and strong of your skill set, uh, you will kind of adapt AI and be able to uh, use AI and just uh, 100x your workflow, right? So I just recently put out this video where um, I had an idea and I tried it out and it worked where I, I use something called Codium, which is like a add-on in VS code, which is uh, generates code, uh, AI-based code based on, you know, whatever prompts you have. So I wrote my kind of uh, uh, prompts itself in comments, right? I opened like a simple uh, Python file and wrote it in uh, comments. And then the only prompt I gave to Codium was, please read the comments and generate the code accordingly. And I watched and it perfectly did, you know, in like 10 seconds, it generated the whole thing. I ran the Python script and it worked fine. And before that, I had been struggling to, you know, uh, in the past, go on to Stack Exchange and uh, figure out, uh, you know, one person will have one answer, it will be uploaded properly, that won't work. And, you know, it basically took me half an hour to do the same thing. So if you look at it from that perspective and realize that it will only kind of uh, make you more efficient and more productive and uh, kind of adopt that instead of getting worried about it. I think it's amazing. See, if you're an artist, especially people uh, say, look at Adobe Firefly and they are like very worried saying, oh, now there won't be a need for my art. That's I think that's not true because I think inherently all of us are creative, right? I'm a very uh, creative person in my mind, but am I able to put that on paper with the tools that I have like Photoshop and stuff, or even like an artist to paint something? No, right? Because that's a learning curve. But I think what AI does is eliminate that learning curve and becomes the tool and the kind of uh, resource that you need to express your artistic vision, right? So all of us as humans, whether you're an artist or just a normal person who wants to uh, put your ideas down on paper can kind of use AI to uh, realize your dream, right? Tomorrow, I've also read that a lot of people uh, in Japan and all that are, uh, you know, showing really promising results where they're in school and they're putting out insanely good, like, you know, pitches for games and stuff. And that's and that's using AI. And I'm like, that's good. We'll have a lot more like solopreneurs and people coming up and actually developing stuff. So uh, I, I'm pro AI. Apart from AGI and whether it will destroy the world and stuff, that's a different discussion and all that. But in terms of just creating, I think uh, the world is going to see a fundamental shift. It's I think the previous time this happened was when you know Steve Jobs released the iPhone, and uh, there was a fundamental shift of how apps came to be and how you did your life. You we are already kind of bionic beings with our mobile phones because half the time we're using your mobile phone. So this is like the next shift of productivity that I think you know we're going to see. So Vinay, that's a very exciting thing that you mentioned. And uh, if you remember, we have also done, uh, conducted a workshop uh, together wherein we have actually taught people on how to use AI in their development process, right? So those of you who want to learn about how to use AI in your development process, the link is in the description. Uh, both of us have shown tips and tricks on how you can use AI tools in your development journey. And I think it will be a great value add for you guys to uh, try it out and uh, speed up your game development journey. So if you're interested in that workshop, it's available as a recording. It's available on my website. So if you're interested, check it out. Link is in the description. So Vinay, in our conversation, you mentioned some group, you know, WhatsApp group uh, uh, that uh, you're a part of. And I'm also a part of that group. And it's a very interesting group. It's, uh, by the way, for those of you who don't know about the group, it's called the India Elite uh, Game Developers Group. If you're not a part of it yet, you definitely must strive to be a part of it. And uh, it's, it's uh, as it's called, you know, it's like the elite game developers of India are a part of that group. So can you, uh, Vinay, talk a little bit about the group and what kind of people are over there and what can you expect uh, if you end up being a part of that group? Right. Yeah. So like you said, uh, just to give it a little bit of history, I think recently we became India Elite Game Developers Group. Before this, we were like Bangalore Elite Game Developers Group. And uh, 
uh, i came across this uh, i think uh, year and a half ago where you know oliver from bombay play had uh, you know put this out i think on uh, linkedin and stuff and uh, so i joined and it's actually very surprising how closely knit the industry in india is just on that group i think i have seen uh, like pretty much everyone uh, from the big shots to like you know the interns and stuff on that group so it's about uh, 1000 members strong group uh, and uh, we keep discussing a lot of game dev topics finally uh, we had one single group then now we made it a community and uh, we added multiple groups right so we have like job group uh, as part of the whole community and we have a lot of like discussion groups uh, topic based discussion groups so it's been like a great uh, movement of sorts and uh, i think uh, people from all around india like like you said you're also on that group and uh, a lot of uh, newcomers come in they get a good idea of uh, the industry at large in india and i think if especially you want you are aspiring to be a game developer then uh, you know you're definitely definitely welcome to join the group uh, we're a very friendly bunch uh, i think uh, sometimes there are these odd cases where we'll have interesting discussions and you know to and fro but i think largely uh, we have really uh, people award winning like game developers on the group we have like uh, people from unity we have people from unreal engine and all kinds of uh, pretty much the big wigs uh, right uh, there who uh, it's it's so uh, amazing to see such big people also kind of get involved with the younger uh, you know upcoming uh, developers and give their thoughts and they don't even come across as they you know big shots they're very humble people and it, it's kind of a very very warm nice community and you know kudos to oliver for driving the whole thing but uh, yeah it's been an interesting journey uh, th- like every time even i have a query or something i message someone from the group and you know amazing people very helpful people have messaged me offline also saying hey you know i i heard you're looking for this can i help you amazing artists are there and stuff yeah so if you are a game developer this is a must uh, visit group and we have a lot of um, Uh, plans for like you know we we have had meetups we do a lot of meetups in bangalore specific and uh, you know uh, pretty much all the discussions on the latest uh, happening stuff in terms of meetups and events in the game industry happen on that group so it's like those uh, like you said elite like you know you, you don't get this the information that you get on the group anywhere outside right i think uh, it, that way it's very uh, very must be on group yeah fantastic vine i think this was a great conversation overall we touched upon a lot of topics um we uh, you know as as game developers there's always that one piece of advice that we are looking for uh, so what can be one piece of advice based on your overall journey so far in game development that you can give to maybe an aspiring game developer who has just started his or her journey in game development right yeah yeah i think uh, just looking back uh, one of the things that uh, as as i started i struggled with was just getting started you know i think the biggest hurdle for anyone new is like how do i do game development you know how how where do i start i would say just download unity if you have a decent system best point of entry is unity if you don't want to download unity there are uh, tools like twine if you're more a no code approach if you want a no code approach uh, there are a lot of uh, no code approaches to unity also um, i would also say go for a structured approach um, i did a lot of youtube videos so you get a lot of mixed uh, kind of input which is kind of good for specific use cases but i would personally especially if you're getting started with unity i would go to like unity learn i found that uh, even after like a couple of years of experience i learned a lot of fundamental stuff that i wasn't aware of on unity learn it's a free kind of pathway you get fundamental unity tools and after that it's just kind of putting your ideas on paper the more games you play i found that uh, you know trying to put those ideas of what you've played uh, into the game you're making will automatically help you find the you know you you will face a lot of issues right game dev is uh, it's fun but it can also be challenging because it's the most cutting edge of uh, you know different uh, uh, like code as well as like creative endeavors so but uh, don't be scared like i i would definitely say just get started don't uh, don't wait to make a huge plan a great idea uh, you know great monetization model and stuff like just download make something fun play around with it and you'll automatically kind of get kick started on the journey fantastic vinay thank you very much for coming on to my channel and uh, sharing all the insights uh, about your journey and talking about games and game development and what not this was a very fun conversation guys uh, check out uh, the lazy indian techy on all social media 
he's most active on twitter but you uh, twitter or x but you can also follow him in, uh, on instagram and uh, vinay any plugs for yourself uh, where can people find you where can they connect with you yeah like like you said i'm uh, mostly on uh, twitter it's uh, lazy indian techie if you just search for it you'll find it i'm also on youtube youtube.com uh, at the lazy indian techie and uh, yeah pretty much it uh, thanks again nikhil it's a huge honor to you know be invited on to your uh, you know podcast and uh, it it's really kind of you and uh, uh, i i have enjoyed having this conversation with you and hope to do more soon thank you so much and guys uh, if you like this video hit the like button if you're finding this video for uh, my channel for the first time then hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss my next videos uh, thank you very much for watching i'll catch you in my next video until then take care